Welcome to Vampire the Masquerade Chapters, a thrilling narrative cooperative board game for one to four players, where tactical combat, branching dialogues, investigation mechanisms, and your own decisions will have an impact on the story itself. In this world of darkness adventure, you will assume the roles of neonate vampires, also known as kindred, and will decide how to act, talk, and evolve, all while having to face the return of old threats, deeply buried secrets, and your own bestial nature. So, let's learn how to play. Each player selects one of the eight playable characters to start exploring the dark, hidden secrets of Montreal. Each character is designed to have certain strengths and advantages. For example, while Aaron Conway is a more proficient fighter, Samuel Armstrong would perform better at any social tasks or negotiations. Once players have chosen a character, they take their respective character board, character sheet, miniature, their set of combat base cards, starting items and discipline cards corresponding to their discipline levels that feature on their clan symbol. Each character begins with a preset character sheet, but players can evolve their sheets over the course of the campaign. Players earn experience points and they can spend them to increase their attributes, skills, or disciplines the way they want. There is no restriction on how they make their character evolve, except that they cannot have a skill level higher than the corresponding attribute. Example: A player cannot have a 3 in Brawl if his character has 2 in Physical Attribute. A character's attributes are their innate abilities when attempting to accomplish a specific physical, social, or mental task. During a check, a player rolls a number of dice equal to the attribute level. Skills define a character's level of expertise and also represent automatic successes when attempting to accomplish a specific task. Each checkmark within a skill counts as an automatic success. Disciplines are the common vampiric powers of each clan the character belongs to. To use the card with its dedicated power, you must first use it as part of the vitae, or vampiric blood contained in your body. Careful, however, as every time you use it, you get closer to getting starved bringing out the beast in you more and more. On your character sheet, there is also a humanity tracker, which you can raise by performing brave and empathetic acts or decrease by committing terrible deeds. Lastly, there is a place to record XP and other useful notes as you play the campaign. Each character also has a flaw which is important to take note as well during play. Now, let's look at a player's board more closely. The damage value is determined by multiplying your character's physical points by two. For example, here you have three in physical attribute. Your damage level is therefore six. You can place a tracker cover to hide the points you don't have access to yet. Every time your character sustains damage, you track it here from left to right. If the tracker reaches the character's limit, that player experiences torpor and is out of the scenario. The willpower value is determined by adding together the values of your character's social and mental points. You can use willpower points in two ways during the game. A. When you want to re-roll up to three attribute dice, this does not apply to red dice. Or B. To recover your discarded skill cards during combat. Hunger represents your inner beast, a force that inhabits all vampires which urges you to kill, dominate, and control your surroundings. At each hunger level, you must swap one black die for a red die when attempting to complete a task. All players start with a hunger level of 1. If at any point the character reaches the maximum level of their hunger track and then fails one more rouse check, they descend into a frenzy. The player no longer controls their character as they instead will search for the closest source of blood in the form of any NPC and kill it. If this happens, Make sure you apply all applicable rules regarding Masquerade Breach and Humanity. All vampires must follow the Camarilla traditions designed to hide the existence of vampires and protect vampiric culture, so keep that in mind as you make decisions in the game. Vampire the Masquerade Chapters follows an overarching campaign which is divided into several scenarios. Each scenario has to be completed by reaching its goal. However, players have many ways of achieving that goal, depending on their methods and choices they make. If this is your first time playing the game, we highly recommend playing the eight optional solo prologues 
which are designed to teach you the basics of the game, the world, and your character's background. To set up a scenario, open the storybook at your active scenario and read the setup section. Place all indicated elements on your gaming table, and also take the corresponding scenario booklet as it contains all the possible dialogues, investigations, and events. Each player places their character's miniature on the appropriate hex of the scenario tile, as instructed in the setup. An arrow on a miniature and a standee defines the direction they are facing. The number of players determines various things, such as the damage level of the enemies, their attack level, etc., so ensure to set up those accordingly. Each scenario starts by reading the narrative introduction front page in the storybook. The back page features the conclusion, thus it is dedicated to the end of the scenario, if you succeed. Avoid reading this in advance. Several non-player characters NPC encountered during the adventure will possess an NPC state card. Place this card face down, revealing only its name, line of sight, and attitude, aggressive or neutral. An aggressive NPC will attack immediately upon entering the line of sight, whereas the neutral NPC will respond to an attack but will not initiate combat. NPCs have dedicated combat decks. Human, ghouls, vampires, authority, etc. Take the corresponding one when facing such an NPC. Some of their cards will have specific targets. For example, this NPC will target the character that is least injured. The round tracker tracks the rounds when prompted by an event dialogue, or an investigation. The initiative tracker will help players track who plays first during a combat scene. The game is composed of four sequences, also known as phases. During the main sequence, players can either move on the scenario tile using their athletics value plus one. They can use the blood to mend damage, to use a discipline, or to blood surge. By doing so, the inner beast will rise within them, thus forcing them to perform a rouse check to try and resist it. Perform an action such as use an item, declare stealth, give or take an item with an adjacent character, begin a dialogue or an investigation, or start a combat. Use willpower, or do nothing. Now, a combat sequence begins if a player declares a combat with an NPC, if they enter an aggressive NPC's line of sight, or if an event or dialogue prompts the combat. During combat, players perform the following actions in order. First, they establish their active hand of cards by selecting a number of cards equal to the character's physical plus mental attribute values. Second, they adjust the initiative tracker according to the physical attribute value and the NPC initiative value indicated on the left side of the track. Thirdly, they choose a single combat card for the round from their active hand. Cards can be either attack, defense, or mix cards. Then, they draw the top card from each NPC's combat deck, placing them face down on the table. Then, from highest to lowest on the initiative track, resolve each participant's combat action. A player can choose to brawl attack by ensuring they are on an adjacent hex to the target, or a ranged attack while having a clear, unobstructed line of sight to the target, and the appropriate range, which by default is 3 hex. Then, the player will roll a number of dice equal to their physical attribute level, plus any bonus dice conferred by the activated card. Any dice showing one ank represents one success, while any dice showing an ank with two fangs represents two successes. A face with nothing represents no success. To the result, add their relevant automatic skill successes. If red dice are rolled and the overall result shows more faces with a skull symbol than total successes, including automatic successes, then the player is forced to perform a rouse check. To perform a rouse check, roll a single red die. If you roll the success, your hunger level stays the same. If you roll a blank side, your hunger level rises by one, and you roll a skull, your hunger level rises by two. Resolve the damage value by subtracting the NPC's resistance value. Place the used combat card in the discard pile. Remember, you can spend a willpower point to return the discarded cards back to your active hand at any given moment. Lastly, please note that once a combat sequence has started, it must be finished, before the players are able to take any other type of action. A dialogue sequence will begin as players engage with NPCs, and it will take form as an interactive branching mechanism guided by the scenario booklet. A dialogue can begin when your character moves to a hex adjacent to the NPC you want to engage with. 
During a dialogue, a skill check may be required and can only be performed by one player. Remember, you can use willpower to re-roll your black dice during such a check if you wish. Also, a dialogue must reach a conclusion before moving to another sequence. You cannot dialogue while other players combat. When a dialogue begins, all players, even those not inside the dialogue, are considered in the same sequence. Lastly, an investigation sequence is resolving a mystery using your mental skills and sense of deduction. Investigation can be initiated when a player moves adjacent to one of the several areas in which players will collect investigation successes and clues. Then a skill check based on the mental attribute plus one skill is made, and the result determines the outcome of your analysis before performing a deduction. The higher your score is, the most data you collect to make a better choice. After the check, a convincing guess to resolve that specific area can be made in order to collect success tokens and move on to another area. After finishing all investigation areas of a map, collecting investigation success tokens, a player can try to make a final deduction regarding the mystery. We have now covered most of the rules of the game you need to know in order to play Vampire the Masquerade chapters. If you have any questions, or if something is still unclear, please refer to the game's rulebook. There are many more unforgettable surprises to be discovered during this in-depth campaign of over 50 scenarios, so immerse yourself in this one-of-a-kind experience set inside the world of darkness.